And now about our talk. I have one good and one bad news. So the bad news are that the gender gap is still very big in the open source world. And uh, the good news is that today we have three beautiful Albanian ladies who have come here to talk about that. So please, your applause for Iona Christie and Suela. Hello everyone, I'm Christy. Uh, I'm here with my two other friends, Suela and Diona. We are going to uh, present today women in uh, open source technologies. Uh, so I'm Mozilla tech speaker and a Mozilla representative. I've been contributing there for around three years now. Uh, also, I'm the Open Labs Hackerspace chairwoman. We have our local hackerspace in Tirana that promotes all the uh, open, open, open software and open source technologies like Mozilla and Wikipedia, Fedora, and other uh, technologies. I'm also a SitePoint author, and this year I finished my studies for international affairs and diplomacy in Tirana in uh, the European University there. Uh, well, going back to the topic now. Uh, on 2012, there was a survey done, and the open source communities found that only 1.1% of contributors were women. And when the same survey was done on 2013, the number uh, was increased, and it was like 11%. It's still not a number that we should be like happy about it, but the good news is that it's uh, going to grow like day by day. And only 1.5% of the free and open source software uh, developers are female. Uh, just 5.4% for, just of GitHub users with over uh, 10 contributions from a random sample are female. The um, numbers were taken from the top toll. And among women who joined the tech industry, 56% uh, live by mid-career which is double the attrition rate for men. Like the main reasons that women to leave their career uh, usually are because they got to take care for their family or they got to take care for the children. So they got to quit the job and to leave everything just to uh, pay all the attention and to, to pay all the energies, to put all the energies on the house and taking care of it. Uh, percentage female users by number of uh, repositories in GitHub the numbers are really low for the female, like uh, up to 10 uh, repositories are done by 8.5%, uh, uh, 10 to 20 are 5.8, uh, 20 to 30 are uh, 5.4, and 30 to 40 are uh, 4.8. So the numbers are really low, even you can, if you can go like till at 100 uh, numbers of repositories. So the, the percentage of female, the, the female is really low even in this area on the GitHub. Well, the issues that uh, indicate the uh, decreased number of women in open source technology is especially from the invisibility. When women, when women are in those kind of environments, they're actually seen by the men that like they're not around there. And when they have, for example, a tech problem, usually people do not go to ask a woman f to fix it, or they just like go and ask a man to help. So this lead also that women are, are not really like happy to contribute there because they think that it's not really any value in it. Ex exceptionalism, like they are also uh, treated like uh, being a woman in open source technologies is like something extraordinary and something not usual. So they do not feel comfortable in an environment that they are seen as something that it's not that usual and something that is rare. Um, social expectations. We often hear the, um, the famous sentence that, hey, what are you doing here? Like you should have been home doing some chores or washing some, watching some fashion stuff. And associating these things with the social ex expectations make them also feel uncomfortable because they think that they do not belong in the environment that they are actually there. And 
Also, there are a lot of cases where the situation is sexualized by the men and the women get comments only because of their bodies or just like random compliments that they do not value their abilities or their skills in the industry, but just the appearance. Um, Mozilla has taken um, an initiative related to that. It's called WOMOS, so uh, women in Mozilla, but not only in Mozilla, but even in the other um, free and open source software communities. Um, women in Mozilla is WOMOS, a community composed of members from, di from different open source projects. It's mainly dedicated to improving women's visibility and involvement in free and open source and Mozilla, and to increase the number of uh, women contributors. And it's also open to everyone and can participate. Actually, in our channel, in the WOMOS, there are 80 women contributing there, but in the beginning, when we, uh, when we first started it, we were just like 10 or 12, and it was like a really low number by day by day, uh, by promoting it and by lobbying about it, the, the number became to grow bigger. Also, the part of the Mozilla Manifesto is that the Internet is a public resource that must remain open and accessible. So it's not just like something that we say like by default, but it's also written somewhere, and it's like the Mozilla Constitution that we've got even the second point of it that says that it's accessible and everyone like is welcome to contribute there. WOMOS is a very active group. It's full of ideas, things to do, uh, different topics to discuss, and also to support each other. We do not only promote WOMOS, but we do also help each other when we have like different uh, problems uh, of women feeling bullied in different areas. Like we can share opinions there, we can share articles, or we can also give uh, to each other the chance, for example, to um, apply in an internship or in a program that can also empower them and encourage women to contribute even more in not just in WOMOS or in Mozilla, but in also every area that they can feel like free to do so. Um, we have a lot of channels going parallel with each other, so in this way we like have a very strong communication. You can find us at the WOMOS.org, I said in Albania it's ORG. <laughs> uh, we have our official website, you can find them a lot of articles that they are very inspiring of women who share their own stories, how did they first started it and how they're uh, doing and how they're growing their lo even their local communities. We have our Facebook channel, IRC, Telegram, as I mentioned you, uh, Telegram, Mozilla Rep, mailing list, and um, in your country. If you have Mozilla Reps, for example, in Bulgaria or from the country that you came from, you can just like go and join their um, their club, like their group, and if there is not any WOMOS going on there, you can just like start trying to to build a new to build a new one. So as you can see, one of our, our strongest points is communication, collaboration, and transparency. But there are also a lot of cases, not just in Mozilla or in the or women that are part of it, but all around the world that women have felt like not comfortable being in those kind of environments. Uh, I have uh, done um, like survey, like I can say, and asked like different girls from WOMOS and how did they feel or if they ever faced any problems when they were uh, working in their job or were there with their friends and how did they feel. Uh, so this, um, this thing is also very like common, for example, in Indonesia or in India and uh, there are a lot of comments that, uh, for example, Kelly Muda, which is a very active girl contributing uh, in Mozilla, said that women, the stigma that women is no better than men in terms of technology is still quite strong here in Indonesia. And it will never end if we women is still lack of confidence to enter the technology industry. The, the discrimination is there and we must, strong enough, we must be strong enough if we want to stay in this industry. Uh, so there, is, there are also other comments that they have, um, they have like given examples, like real examples that they have been feeling bullied or the man environment in their job ma didn't make them feel welcome. 
because there were women and they were trying to, to, to contribute in something that is called men only. So this is uh, my presentation that covered uh, the WOMOS and the Mozilla part, and Yana will be there to talk about Fedora. So hey, I'm Yana. Uh, I study in Albania for business informatics at the University of Tirana. Uh, meanwhile, I'm part of Open Labs. I'm a board member there. As Christy said, it's our hackerspace where we promote different open source projects. Also, I'm Fedora ambassador uh, in Albania. I've been part of Fedora project uh, for three years now, and uh, I'm um, an ambassador for one year. Also at Fedora, I'm part of different teams, for example, come ups, marketing, and uh, diversity team. That is our newest team at Fedora. Also, I'm the document foundation member, uh, where I promote uh, LibreOffice at my country. So I will talk about our project that we have only for women at Fedora. So um, you can reach us uh, at our IRC channel, Fedora Women on Freenode. Also, we have our mailing list. So what is our mission statement at Fedora Women? So we, we provide a forum for women in the Fedora community. As I said, we have a mailing list only for women but not only for them, because also, uh, I don't know, men, if they have a, uh, a question to ask us, they can write there. Uh, also, we have an IRC channel, and we do all this because uh, for women, uh, for their first steps to be part of, of uh, an open source project, it's better to, to talk with the women, because we feel like we, uh, we understand better each other. Uh, something else that we need uh, is to provide a stronger voice for the women uh, of the Fedora community. So if we have a problem, if we feel discriminated at our community, we need to speak up. It doesn't matter that we are a woman and we cannot talk, uh, we cannot uh, say the others what problem we, ha we have. Because the, uh, the best solution when we have a problem is to speak up. And of course, we need to avoid the segregation. So I said that we have mailing lists only for women, but this doesn't mean that we, we need to be separated by men. No, the best way to, to have an ex inclusive community, let's say, is also to collaborate with men, to work also with them. And what's it's the most important part is to have fun. Okay, Fedora Women is open to any women who is looking for a supportive group within the Fedora community. And it doesn't matter if you have really good technical knowledge, let's say. Uh, you can even be part of a uh, non-technical part at uh, our group. So for this reason, involvement with the Fedora project, whether as a user or a contributor, is strongly encouraged. So if you are new at Fedora and you don't know how to be part of the community, you don't know how to contribute there, you don't know how our sub-projects, let's say. Some of the sub-projects and teams that we have, uh, it's ambassadors, come-ups, design. So if you are good at technical stuff, for example, you can be part uh, of packages maintainers, quality assurance. But if you are good at writing, you can be part of documentation, uh, magazine that it's our website to write uh, different uh, blog posts about uh, different stuff at Fedora. Or if you are good at design, uh, you can be part of the design team. Or if you are good at promoting stuff, you can be part of the marketing team and ambassadors, like I do. For example, I come here to promote Fedora. So uh, different initiatives that we have uh, at Fedora that you can be part of is, for example, GNOME Outreach Program for Women. So this is an internship uh, that uh, uh, the duration of this internship is for six months. So each woman can be part of it. And not, it's not only for girls, but also for other people that feel like they are a girl or they are a woman. And they want to be part of it. So uh, during uh, this internship, you will have a mentor for it. Uh, you will have uh, to fulfill some tasks, and your mentor will teach you how to do that. And uh, of course, that this internship is paid, so it's like a full-time job, let's say. And if you go at outreach.org, you can apply there. Uh, 
you have there not only Fedora project as one of the open source projects part of it, but you have, for example, also Mozilla or Debian, uh, Wikipedia, and lots of them. And how to be part of it? So you can join their uh, official mailing list that they have for the outreach. Uh, you can write there, you can um, make an introduction of yourself. You, you can say, hey, I'm Yona, for example. Uh, I study for business informatics. Uh, I want to be part of this internship. I want to be part of the technical part or non-technical part because you have both of them. Uh, and one of the mentors that is there uh, will teach you the other steps. So uh, you need to, to uh, do some stuff before the applications. Uh, of course, that your mentor will teach you everything. And uh, before the deadline, you will uh, just post the, uh, your application. And uh, after one month, I guess, uh, you will have a response if you, if you want it or how is the, the process that will be after that. Uh, of course, that we have also Google Summer of Code, uh, that it's not only for women. Uh, everybody can be part of, or part of it. It's like uh, GNOME outreach, but it's more also for other persons. So here we have like uh, women uh, contributors at Fedora. So we don't have many women at our project, but uh, the main leadership role, let's say, are uh, we have lots of women there. Uh, for design team, diversity team, localization, magazine, and also our Fedora project leader was a girl. Uh, this year was the first year where, uh, when we organized uh, one day only for girls, and we called it Fedora Women Day. So uh, people around the world uh, could organize an event, and we also had a Skype call or hangouts uh, with each other, so we could uh, share our experiences. Uh, we could know how how many how percentage of the women uh, was in other countries, and uh, we will do this uh, every year so we can know better other communities and we can share our experiences. So this is a group photo of Flog that it's our annual conference at Fedora. Uh, as you can see, we were like. 200 people there, and we had 17 girls. So we need more work to do uh, for this so we can have more girls. Uh, that's why uh, we opened, let's say, also another team that is called Diversity Team, because we wanted to have a more inclusive community, so not talk about only about women, but also under representative groups. But the first steps that we are taking now is to have more women, because as I said at the other picture, we don't have many. Um, here are some of the, the people of the diversity team. And here is the diversity panel that we were at Flock. So we were discussing how to have more women part of our community. For example, if we, uh, one of the things that we can do, we can sponsor more girls to go to conferences like this, for example, to, to talk with other girls, how to be part of our community. And um, also something that we need to fix is, for example, to have more uh, statistics, how many girls we have, or uh, how is the percentage of the women it, uh, each year at our program. So our communication channels that we have, uh, you have our mailing list that it's for the diversity day. We have um, Pagura that it's our website where we have different tickets about different problems that we have. For example, if we need to start a survey, what question do we need to, to add them? Uh, we have each ticket for all of them. And also we have our weekly meetings on IRC, uh, on Fedora Diversity, on uh, Freenode. And now Suela uh, will tell you how is the situation uh, at our hackerspace in Tirana. Uh. Hi, everybody. I am Suela. I'm a business informatics graduate student at the University of Tirana. I am uh, currently finishing my master's studies on the same university in information systems. And I am also OpenLabs hackerspace member. 
I am recently a Fedora contributor and a consultant at uh, PHP List, a company that sells support for their open source software, marketing open source software. And uh, I'm going to show you more about how the situation is like in uh, our community in Albania. So uh, this is the photo from the last edition of OSCAL. OSCAL is the open source conference in Albania, the first annual uh, conference of this kind in Albania, and it, uh, it's two, day, uh, two days, and it's all dedicated to promoting free software and free knowledge and open source technology. Uh, we are very happy with the, uh, what OSCAL has produced so far, and uh, considering the statistics after OSCAL finished, like uh, we had 45% uh, women participants and uh, just uh, the other 45% uh, boys and men, which is, uh, makes us very positive, like we are doing a great job in promoting women in technology and uh, closing the gender gap that is such a great problem in other communities. And uh, we are uh, really positive uh, also for our speakers or uh, participants from other countries who notice this uh, kind of Great stuff. So uh, this is a review from uh, a speaker from abroad, and he says that uh, Oscar showed how girls can rock IT subjects and that free software is a socially important and empowering topic for everyone, which uh, makes us feel uh, really better and uh, just keep up with the good work to empower women and encourage them and uh, make them not feeling uh, exclusive from uh, these kind of uh, careers, if we say, may say so. So. Uh, Another initiative at our hockey space is uh, Ada Lovelace Day, and uh, it's named after Ada Lovelace, the first programmer, and uh, we find it really interesting because it's uh, quite a great role model to inspire a woman that, uh, uh, hey, we can take initiatives. We are the ones who took the first step in this area, so don't feel so uh, afraid to participate and don't see it like a man ruled uh, area. So uh, another... Uh, uh, event we organize at uh, our hackerspace is Mozilla Weekend, today dedicated to Mozilla and uh, all the sub projects uh, that Mozilla covers, that uh, also Christy explained. And uh, we have, like you may see, we, uh, were, we took care that we can separate girls from boys so we can see the difference better. And as you can see, we are uh, maybe in advantage or equal, <laughs> I'm not sure of that. So. Uh, this is a photo from Fedora Meetup. Uh, Fedora is one of the most active uh, projects at our workspace currently, uh, and girls are very interested in contributing there. Uh, we are mainly focused on localization, and maybe this is uh, this kind of activity, which is not very technical, makes girls feel like, hey, I can go for it, and then I can do something more technical or that requires more skills, extra skills. This is also another activity, uh, Wikilove Maps. We also promote Wikipedia, free knowledge shared on Wikipedia. And uh, this is a project uh, for improving articles uh, for locations uh, that uh, from different languages about uh, Albania or writing new articles about uh, different locations uh, in uh, Albanian Wikipedia. So, uh, we see we are doing good, better than other communities. Uh, but what are the reasons that uh, we have uh, these kind of numbers? So what we think we are doing good in this direction is uh, our d educational system. The market in Albania is currently like hungry for uh, technical uh, or technology ex experts or students. And uh, women want to see like one, uh, it's a new career for them and they See, it also like a better opportunity to find a job after they graduate. That's like uh, employment among, among youngsters is quite a problem. And uh, this is a main uh, point that women don't, uh, or even if they feel afraid, they just go for it and uh, feel like I should do it. Even if I don't like it, I'll like it or I'll learn it to do better in the future. So, how to encourage women? Uh, these uh, politics or strategies, if I may say so, Yona and uh, Christy also presented uh, in the, what they do in their communities. And uh, one of the main points is to recruit diversity, like uh, promoting and encouraging women to participate. Uh, 
and make them feel like, no, this is not uh, men dominated or men are not inclu uh, exclu uh, excluding you. So uh, also create a code of conduct. If men like really, if there are some men like really think that, hey, I can do this better. I'm a boy. I have the passion. I have the skills or something like that. Uh, we have a, con a code of conduct that uh, against harassment and against uh, those kind of attitudes. Also, value all contributions, not only the technical contributions or coding or some uh, hard stuff uh, are valuable. Also, doing this, promoting, spreading the word about uh, uh, opportunities in other communities or uh, just showing up role models that they can follow, it's also a good job and uh, have, does have an impact. Also, organize events and conferences so uh, they can get to meet other persons who have done this before, share experience, get to know uh, what others do to overcome their fears or something that may, may feel them feel insecure. So uh, if you have any questions, we are all open to answer them. So you can go on the mics in the middle of the room or just raise your hand. So Alex goes first. Okay. Hi, thank you. So my question is, can you uh, very shortly, each one of you, tell us how you get started in open source? What happened so you decided to start working with open source and join the community? Uh, okay. So the first steps when I met, let's say, open source were, was OSCAL, uh, the conference that Suela explained. Uh, I just saw on Facebook uh, an event about it, and I just went there to see what is happening. Uh, there I saw Yanis, that uh, he had a presentation about Fedora. So let's say Fedora was my first uh, open source project that I wanted to be part. So after Oscar, I, uh, I saw that Open Labs organized it, so I went there at their hackerspace. Um, I met uh, lots of people that we, we shared the same interests. So that's what the, the, my first steps, let's say, there. And after that, I was part of Fedora community. I saw that the community is really friendly. Yeah, I'm part of it. <laughs> Okay, my experience with open source. Well, it's kind of funny because I always dreamt to be a doctor and uh, hated technology. <laughs> yeah, but uh, and open source communities are the reason why I feel technology now can be a right career for me. Uh, because I didn't like it, but when I first participated in Oscar with Yona, and I get to meet so many girls that, hey, I wanted to be a doctor, but now I'm not. I'm very happy that I didn't make that choice. And it's really inspiring uh, hearing people that uh, overcome their fears and are not f afraid to share what they experienced or what went wrong with them and what can you improve. So that's what communities are good for. You can feel support. You can uh, get to meet people that have the same uh, problems or uh, have some extra skills that you may learn from. OK, uh, I first joined the hackerspace uh, when it was first founded on 2012. Uh, the main reason I went there was because my friends were there. But uh, then as they were explaining me that, like, what they were doing, I started to really like it. I was in the high school. Uh, and since then, I didn't stop like contributing and just like keep working on it. And I was like presented with all the um, uh, technologies and all the programs that we were promoting there, and I felt really good on, good on contributing to Mozilla. So this is also how I started to contribute to Mozilla. Uh, technology actually doesn't have like um, obvious relations with my studies, but somehow I found a middle point to mix them up together and to came up with online diplomacy. All right. Uh, there is another question from here. Hello, ladies. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, 
First of all, thank you for being here. Um, I think with the topic of uh, women in tech uh, is becoming more and more trendy and important. I think if we all aim at um, sustainable business, uh, it's very nice that um, young people are putting so much attention and effort into it. So thank you. Way to go. Uh, my question is, and I kind of um, probably missed this throughout the presentation, um, is the... Um, presence of women that you get more organically so it's everyone's personal interest uh, that they come to all those meetings and movements that you do or um, do companies also give you some type of sponsorship in terms of commitments uh, support uh, what is your collaboration with companies on the market Uh, so thank you very much for your words. Um, well, uh, I'm starting it with uh, relations with the company. Uh, we do not have a good relations with the local com companies in Tirana. They are not like very supportive to us. They because they kind of don't even understand like what we are like kind of actually doing. But we have a very good uh, collaboration mostly with international companies and organizations like Mozilla and. Uh, Fedora, like Wikimedia, and so. And related to the first question, like even if the number of uh, women in our community is something that comes like naturally or is something that uh, it's indicated, uh, it's, I think, in my opinion, it's completely naturally. Most of the people and most of the girls that come in our community is uh, to expand their knowledge related to the open source, since open source, to be honest, is not something that it's uh, done in the university to have a lot of knowledge about it. They just like talk maybe two maximum one hour about it and that's it. So they are really like curious to know more and to extend their knowledge. So they just like keep coming in our hackerspace and contributing there and do also. Um, it, it's a situation actually win-win. They win the knowledge. We do also like want to win a little people and to come to contribute. So I think that it's something that comes naturally. You just go ahead. Thank you. S sorry, Maya, if, if I may ask the question before you. Um, is there any study that analyzes the relationship between having a code of conduct and one, the amount of uh, women that work on, that, on those projects, and two, whether that project has more high quality code and or popularity? Okay, sorry, can you repeat the second one? whether the code of conduct has any influence on the code quality of the project or on its popularity. We cannot hear it very well. Did you? Again, I'll try again. Uh, whether the co existence of a code of conduct has any influence on the code quality or the popularity of the project. Okay. So, um, I guess uh, the code of conduct is to, uh, to make women feel more comfortable in joining a community, but not really in the, like, the code uh, lines, number of code lines, or the, num the quality of the code produced. It's just like spreading the world, uh, a word and uh, making them feel more like, uh, free to join and share what they know or want to know. Um, can I also add something? Yeah. Uh, in Mozilla, for example, uh, they do give a lot of effort and they do support a lot of the conferences that have a code of conduct. That's because the women, for example, there, or people generally feel more comfortable in a place that they know that what is forbidden and they know that what is permitted. So me as a woman, for example, I feel much comfortable personally if I'll go somewhere and I know that the person do not really has a right to say something on me and but and also if they do it they'll have like something that goes like breaking the rules and the organizers or somebody else will take care of it so i think that the code of conduct is a very good way in the politic to just like keep the balances and not to um, and, and to keep their the environment like in a linear situation and keep things like calm since we're a lot of people and we came from different backgrounds, so this is a good way to to put us all together, you know, in my opinion. 
uh, okay, just a follow up. It, it usually sounds like a good idea, but as I'm currently involved in data driven policies, that's why I asked whether there's a study that confirms that more women uh, participate in uh, repositories and projects that have code of conduct or not. And maybe it's, it's too early for such a study, but maybe it's a good idea to have one. Hi, my name is Maya Milusheva. Uh, I'd like to start with a short introduction about myself. I'm a woman in IT, obviously. I'm a CEO of a quite profitable IT company. I'm a mother as well, so you would say I went through quite a lot in the IT industry. So I have the experience and authority to talk about this topic. Now, what I want to say is that the whole talk about women in IT is usually a bad thing for us. Uh, because basically what it says is, well, it's okay to have lower income, it's okay to do uh, worse than boys in the IT industry because, well, there's a world conspiracy against you, you know, people hate you, that's why. So that's why I'm against the whole talk. Also, I did some recruiting because I have a company. Uh, and also I went to a school that had like eight girls and 100 boys. So, you know, I'm quite used to be in, around a lot of boys. Um, the whole thing is girls are usually quite lazy. They're just not that good programmers. Sorry, but that's true, honestly. Uh, they just don't want to get their hands dirty to do the job. And um, when I tried to do some recruiting, I intentionally wanted to recruit women. And at the end, I failed to do so. You want, do you want to know why? Because most of those girls were usually just cheating, and um, they, just, they were just not good programmers. At the end, I had to recruit boys. Uh, and that's why I think the whole talk about let's recruit more women is bad, because at the end, you're recruiting worse programmers. Uh, at the end, your company is going to suffer. And you're gonna lose some money. I know it's trendy to talk about women in IT, but I think women should just start studying more and getting the job done. And I, I honestly don't see girls staying up until late at their office and working that often. No, it's usually the boys staying there. Why? I don't know. So that's what I want to say. I, I think the whole lecture should be removed, and I think it's just bullshit. Okay. Um. May I answer that? Just yeah. one second. Okay. What do you want? Okay. Uh, okay. Everyone has a, uh, its own opinion. I just want to say one thing. Make one thing clear. The whole idea of uh, this uh, presentation is not uh, the sentence, we should recruit more girls. No. We know there is a meritocracy system, and uh, each company should recruit the best program there. The whole idea of this kind of projects and communities is just to spread the word that, hey, there is a project where you can really come, and if you want to really learn, you can learn. Then. Uh, it's not our responsibility how people uh, may want to just uh, make use of what is offered. We just want to make sure that there is people who are making a career here. They are uh, overcoming the... Why uh, then? Uh, the salaries. Yeah, all of uh, different kind of problems in the industry. They are not afraid if they go and work with all these, the best programmers that are the boys. They, can, they are not afraid to show what they really are worth. We don't want uh, companies to just uh, hire us because, hey, I'm a girl, you are not uh, respecting all these uh, politics on uh, women and men uh, numbers and uh, you have to employ me. No, you ju I just want you to see me the same, uh, to give me the same uh, opportunities as you give to the male programmers. Okay, if I want to start up, uh, I don't know, 
uh, a startup in technology, and if I go and ask uh, for sponsorship in a bank in Albania, I am sure most of them wouldn't even consider giving to you. But if you are a boy, they will. We are talking about the, the general concept that a girl cannot make a startup in technology succeed, but a boy can. So here you go, you can get the opportunity to start. All right. Uh, Great, you can come and share your experience with us. All right, sorry, How but did you, you do can it? finish that after, after we finish with the official part. Anything, uh, I w there is something I would like to ask myself personally. Actually, uh, I'm also an important employee. I'm not coming from the open source world, although I have interest in that. I'm in the corporate world. And what I have seen there is uh, I'm a QA manager at the moment, so this is uh, something I'm seeing in my past five companies. Junior QAs, uh, men to women, about 50-50. So regular, the women are about one-third. Senior, only uh, a couple of people are women. Top management, no one. So we had a very big uh, thinking about uh, that topic. Why, why is this happening? And uh, as much as we discussed, it turned out that uh, at some point, uh, women just decide to become parents, and uh, this is a very big stop in their career. So uh, there is one more thing that the employer is concerned about when hiring uh, uh, women. I mean, uh, okay, it's not about your technical skills or something, but uh, as an employer, I often have a concern, okay, will she get pregnant uh, in one year, or and uh, then she will not be at work for, let's say, four. So this is something we're concerned, and I would like to hear your opinion on that. Uh, I do also mention that in my part during the presentation that the uh, 56 percent of the women left their job at the middle age approximately because since they got to take care of the house and and the children which is like quite obvious i mean we can also face this in our everyday life but i want to go back to the comment that um it was made before uh i'm coming yeah i'm coming from albania and the situation is like completely different in usually in it classes in the universities there are 90 percent of the students are girls and only 10 percent are uh, men and i'm like I, I can understand her point of view she had a personal experience and i can also understand why she has a kind of opinion but i think that it's something that is a personal experience more than it's like just something that is that we can take it like by default uh since okay. uh since it's uh, since we came from, as I said, from different backgrounds, we have, we have all our personal experience. My personal experience is different from her personal experience. I came from an environment with mostly girls and they're very capable to do their job and they have fulfilled skills to do it. I, I know very great and good programmers that do code like PHP and Python. But as, as I said, it's something very personal. It's not, I, I, I do really feel bad if all of everyone would just like think that girls are lazy and girls cannot do thing because I do also believe that you do not like believe this, so. Okay, so last question. Yeah, I will not, can you turn this on or something? Hmm, it's on, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, it's not that girls are lazy, but I think it, that in general, girls don't do computing for fun. So like, if a boy likes to do something, he can stay all night and do everything, but the girls are like more, I don't know what's the word, like more disciplined, but also they, they don't like to take risks that much like boys, and they don't like to play with things. I don't know, for example, if you see okay. with children, Girls play with dolls and stuff like that, and boys, boys like to take screwdrivers and okay. break if up they... toys and stuff like that. I think that that's the core issue 
it's like a social construct or stuff like that. Okay. So can someone repeat that on the mic? Sorry, we didn't hear. What? what? We didn't hear what you said. The other one said. Uh, we didn't hear what that guy uh, said. Yeah, that he said about the social experiment with animals. Uh -huh, okay. You can come if you like, but maybe you can say that girls are better for large corporations and men are for better for startups. <laughs> because. Okay, so you're <laughs> so you're basically saying that the problem is that girls do not do it for fun. But they but do it, right? No, but it's the generalization, yes. It's not like every girl or every man. But in general, we like to play with so, stuff and, okay, I don't so know, cars and everything. And okay, cool. So if you're, a, if you're a CEO of the company and yes. you have girls and boys doing the same thing and you just want to get the job done in the end of the day and you don't really care who loves it or not. And if the girls do it and if the boys do it the same way, but even if the girls can do it better than boys, then no, but if, if, for example, we see some girl that is like, I don't know, she likes to play with electronics and everything, the common, the common people will say that she's a tomboy or something. So it's like, you know, it's like gen gender These generalization. The These are we should, generally the stereotypes. Yeah, we should fight time. that, but it's also true in most cases. Yep, so we must accept that, that, that in general, stuff are like that. So it, we shouldn't, I mean, this talks about women in IT, it's like watching Mad Men, you know, like, it's like IT, the IT sector is like in the 50s, because I don't know how a lot of other fields like marketing and economics work with mixed genders, you know. Okay, I can understand your point of view, it's, it's the stereotypes that do actually exist in the whole world, that yeah. girls are more into another sector and boys are more into the other sector. But let's talk about the, the level of skills and the abilities. And you do skills. not say that girls cannot do it, like girls cannot do math, girls can no. do not program. You're not but saying that, right? You, it, yes. it's, just, it's just about the giving the same opportunities to both of the, to, even to the girls and even to the boys. So it's for sure that it's a stereotype, but come on, this is the talk about, let's, let's fight it and let's, the, the main thing that is very important is that we are both equal in the intellectual level. Yeah, of course. If you give us a test, we can both do it. It's yeah, not but like something uh, that girls uh, cannot do it. All right, do it. Uh, unfortunately, we are mm -hmm. out of time. So let's thank one more time. Can I just say? Of course, something. you just can continue the discussion. Now there is a lunch that uh, is until uh, half past two. So at 14.30, we expect you back here. Uh, let me remind you that you are not allowed uh, to bring in uh, drinks and food. And there are uh, many bars and restaurants that uh, you can see on the magic boards near the exit. Uh, we are out of time completely. Uh, OK, the, there had been one comment, so you can continue. There are a lot of people who doubt uh, the need of equality just validates the need of this debate. I think we took maybe the debate a little bit lower, turning it into uh, an argument uh, between or a little bit on a personal level. But the truth is that I think the reason for exclusion is the culture. So you, you have the, you need, we need companies just need to create the kind of culture that is open to, or feels open to everyone. And in women in IT or in many industries are underrepresented, which creates uh, high pressure on them. And a lot of uh, them lack self-confidence, not skills. And this is a problem of everyone and not just women. So that is, uh, I think it's a very yeah. valued, uh, a very valuable, uh, topic to talk on. That was my comment. So, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you all.